All right, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Get Growing Weekly Work Session with Kit Oiling. I'm Coach Ashley. Today we are joined by founder of Get Oiling, Greg Kilwine. Hello. Hello everyone. We also have Colin, Julie, and Jessica on our team here today. Hey guys. Hello. Guys. hello. Thrilled to have you here today. We have a fun topic to cover. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today, and uh, we do have a surprise for you also. Uh, made you a little something that you can put to use in your account today. Uh, excited to hear from you. Let us know where in the world you are coming in from. Uh, always excited to see where in the world you are. Get Oiling is a global platform, so we can work with any Young Living brand partner anywhere in the world. We have compliant, uh, built-in, pre-made websites, uh, and of of course, you can go all the way through to incredible levels of customization for your personal brand so that you can grow your Young Living business on your terms while managing all of your education and outreach on the back end in a seamless environment where you can just import your contact file from the VO and do everything that you need to do, keep track of it, have your to-dos, all that kind of good stuff, all under one roof where you host your classes, you send your emails, you communicate with your folks, you educate your people. We've got you covered. So uh, if you are brand new here, welcome. We have this live session every single Thursday at noon Eastern time, uh, US. And, uh, and of course, if you are on our list at getoiling.com forward slash weekly work session, you will get notified of the topics. Uh, and of course, get an invite to join us on a Zoom just like this. So uh, let's go see where everyone is from here. We've got Oklahoma City, Wyoming, Buffalo, Michigan. Oh, over the road truck driver, east to west. What's up, Zoom user? Don't know your name, but welcome wherever in the world you are. We also have Grace with us today. Hi, Grace. <laughs> Hi. We've got Detroit, Southwest Wisconsin, Kansas City, Kelowna, Canada, Mid Hudson Valley. Hi, neighbor. Tallahassee, Dodge City is where you're headed right now. There's a lot of those. Which one? Um, <laughs> Phoenix, Kansas City, Virginia, Southern Oregon, Loganville, Wisconsin, Frankfurt, Germany. Hello. We are so excited to have you here today. Our team is based all over as well. Um, We've got Greg and Jessica are both in North Dakota. Julie's in Florida. Colin is in uh, Canada in BC, right? And I'm in New York, so hi. All right, we're thrilled to have everyone here today. Let's get into this. I've got some slides prepared. We're gonna go through this and then I'm gonna share your surprise with you. And for those of you who stick around, you're gonna be the very first to get it, to use it in your own account, so stay tuned. All right, and of course, if you see this as a recording, just check the description box, you'll find it there. So team, let's go ahead and turn off our video for good recording quality. And uh, if you've got questions, you guys, if you're here today looking for help, please do go right ahead and ask your questions in the Q&A just to, kind of quick piece of housekeeping here. Uh, we do get very, um, very sort of active uh, in our chat here on the live calls. And we want to make sure we don't miss the questions that you might have brought here to get help with. So today we're going to talk about email marketing that actually works to grow Young Living. So what we're going to do today is first go over an email strategy that works to grow Young Living. This is going to be part mindset, part actual strategy. And then, like I mentioned, I did make a little thing for you uh, that you are going to get to actually take and use in your account. We're going to do some website reviews. We do have uh, a confirmed review today to work together live. And then any Q&A and support that you might need. So if you came here today looking for help, please add your questions or your request for help in the Q&A. And we'll make sure to work with you on our call here live. And if you want to join this, uh, a future call like this one, you can go to getoiling.com forward slash weekly work session and be the first to know about what is coming up each week and get a link to join us on one of these live calls. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help, like one person did sign up for today, uh, you can go to getoiling.com forward slash website review and we can look over what you're working on together. If you're stuck on something or you just want a set of eyes on your work, uh, we're thrilled to help you with that on a dedicated space of time on a live call like this one. I got a question for you guys. Let me know in the chat your answer to this. <clears throat> what would your business look like if you had a big list of customers who were excited to hear from you every time you reached out? How would that feel? What would it be like if every time you reached out to your Young Living customers, whether you have one or two or 20,000, what would it be like? And what would your business look like? What would this do for you if they were excited to hear from you. Do you think that they might um, place orders on their own easily and without being reminded? Maybe they would um, even try more product, right? It'd be pretty cool, huh? 
<clears throat> and what if you could just increase the percentage of the people who take action when you share information? Do you think that you would hit your growth goals faster if just a few more people would take action when you share information? So think about even just recently, we've got Rise to Rank, right? We've got, uh, there was a spring break sale, right? As, as of the time of filming here, there's, there's been a spring break sale that was just extended. If your people took action on the things that you shared, yeah, you'd be at your next goal already, right? A dream come true. So look guys, as a business with an online presence, where it comes to keeping in touch with your customers and growing your base of them, getting more of them, nothing beats email. Nothing, 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 period. Doesn't matter what anybody else says <laughs> because building an engaged email list is hands down the most profitable activity you can perform in your business in the long run. And this is despite, you know, the advent of text marketing and, you know, the persistence of things like direct mail marketing, nothing hits like email, right? And you have a massive opportunity to foster retention in your organization, to build engagement with your customers and to create growth with email if we do this right. Now, getting this right might look like something different than what you thought it did, right? So let's kind of, let's steal ourselves for that because a lot of us, and this is sort of the nature of this business, right? We're kind of monkey see, monkey do. We kind of, we, we try to duplicate what we see, even if we don't know that that's something that's actually working for someone else. Can we see a quick show of hands? Does that make sense? Have you ever done that? Have you ever said, oh, hey, so-and-so I think is doing that successfully. I'm going to try and do what they did. But see, if you don't know the numbers on the back end, you don't actually know that what they're doing is working, right? Unless you can see that that person is getting, you know, increases in their OGV or getting new customers because of that thing that they did, you don't really know, right? It's a shot in the dark. We're throwing pasta at the wall and see, seeing if it'll stick. What kind a of thing. Did anybody ever actually like take a piece of pasta out and throw it at the wall to see if it's done? <laughs> I remember growing up always hearing that. I was like, who does that? It's the weirdest thing. Anyway, <laughs> so Lisa says she totally did that. Uh, so um, I, I don't know, maybe, oh, you're Italian. So is it an Italian thing, Lisa? Anyway, <laughs> so when you see how easy it is to actually do this right, I think you're going to breathe a collective sigh of relief. We're all just going to exhale so that we can take a nice big inhale of our favorite oils because email is actually a very easy thing in our work, what we do if we do it right. Okay. So today we're going to learn how we've got, <laughs> we've got more people who actually have a history of family members throwing pasta at the wall. So this is actually a thing you guys I, today. I learned that. All right. So today we're going to learn together uh, how most email platforms actually put your business at risk. We're going to talk about how pretty emails can work against you can actually go against what you're trying to accomplish we're going to learn because a lot of us really do care about how we look and how we show up. Obviously, we're in the age of Instagram and social media and filters and all this kind of good stuff. So we're going to learn how we can balance, like introduce and balance aesthetic approaches with actual effective strategies in your emails. And then we're going to learn how to create emails that people want to open and read that, if it's important to you, still displays your visual style. Okay. So here's a question for you guys. Uh, maybe just uh, let me know in the chat with a yes. Do you send emails currently to your customers regularly? No is also fine. A I do sometimes, but not regularly is also an answer. <laughs> so uh, what does that look like for you? I'm definitely seeing yeah, some yeses, some noes. Some of us are regular. Some of us know we need to do a little bit more, right? Just a newsletter once a month, scared of spamming. Kiana, that's actually one of that's it's smart. We're going to talk about that in some detail here today for sure. Um, all right. So we've got some text as well. Text is great. Text is really good to reach people, but there's a lot of limitations on text. Um, perfect. Awesome. So, all right, we're going to get into what this looks like. So what do you use? Do you use, um, does everybody here use Get Oiling? Do you use other things? Do you use stuff like, uh, I don't know, MailChimp or, um, you know, do you use anything other than what we have here. We've got a lot of good oiling users, of course. Welcome. Hi guys. <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about this. This is really, really, really important. This is a topic that came up a while back. I think maybe almost two years ago uh, when a lot of Facebook accounts uh, were getting shut down by Young Living uh, brand partners. 
uh, who were sharing information, pretty innocuous information, and uh, you know, and, and the powers that be on these platforms that are privately held and you know have the right to make their own decisions, uh, you know, shut them down, uh, cut off their access to the work that they've created uh, and to the networks that they've built. Now, this is a really important thing that you need to know. You're in a direct selling, you're in a network marketing business, and the vast majority of email providers. Specifically, you know, the places where you can go and send bulk emails, manage and send bulk emails um, to your downline, to your customer base. They specifically prohibit network marketing and to my complete surprise, affiliate marketing as well. It's literally in their fine print. This is MailChimp and Flowdesk, you guys. Now, I know in some cases, maybe you reach out and they're like, oh, I'm with Young Living. Is that okay? Someone can say that in the chat and say, yeah, it's okay. But guys, this is legal stuff that's on their websites. So you can go to and search for terms of service, access, acceptable use policies for any tech provider that you use. You wanna make sure you're reading that fine print because as a Young Living brand partner, these companies are not cool with what we do. Really important thing to notice and remember and take into account, all right? Now, given how important your list of subscribers is to your business, it's really critical that you're using a platform that won't pull the rug out from underneath you, right? You invest a lot into getting things right. You learn platforms, you learn how to do this stuff. Guys, like, don't set yourself up for that potentiality. I'm not saying it's going to happen to you. Maybe nothing ever happens, but oh my goodness, why would you put yourself at that risk, right? <laughs> Those companies need to get into this decade. I hear you, Lisa. So make sure that you're reading that fine print for everything that you use, right? And this is again, like, you know, I, I don't wanna poke too hard on this because we've already talked about it on other trainings, but if you're, you know, serving your Young Living customers, on a tech flat platform that's not called getaway link, uh, like with, you know, maybe you got your groups on Facebook or something like that, you should really make sure that you are reading those terms of service so that where you are pouring your time and efforts in to your business, you have security around the work that you're doing, right? Or around you being able to keep access to the work that you're doing. All right, so getaway link was built by and for Young Living brand partners. Right, so we're not going to do that to you. Check our check our fine print. <laughs> we're totally cool with you. Uh, and our sister site, Attractwell. Just FYI, if you have uh, friends who are in other network marketing companies or who are affiliate marketers, right? Um, we have a uh, sort of cloned minus the Young Living features uh, site called Attractwell. That's for everyone that's outside of Team YL. So if you want to share this information, um, we do have our same company. All of us, our team, also has this other platform. Um, it really, really is so important for you as a as a network marketer, as a member of this incredible industry, uh, that you protect your work. All right. So now, now that we're past that, make sure you read your fine print. Uh, let's talk about pretty emails. Okay. So we talk about branding yourself a lot on this channel, right? Like we want to show up in our values, showing up talking about purpose, leading conversations that other people want to be a part of, um, and not just, you know, being a, 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 you know, a commercial or an infomercial for young living, right? In our social media and how we show up. So we talk about branding yourself a lot on this channel, but branding and decorating are not the same thing, right? Branding is showing up consistently with a consistent message. Um, obviously, yeah, sure. You can have consistent visuals like your fonts and colors and logos and things like that but there is there's branding and then there's decoration right and it, I don't know have you, have you guys ever heard of the term it's it's more popularly used in like the design world or in architecture um, but form follows function is the term or form over function right or function over form so What's really important for you to know where we're talking about email, because this does get a little complicated and I don't want to get too into the weeds because even a lot of this, um, like I would have to lean on Greg to understand to you if we went that far into it. Um, most important thing for you to know is that there are sort of complicated uh, systems through which email companies will evaluate the content of your emails. And depending on how you've sent it, the words you've used, um, how many images that you've used and things like that, they will decide like Gmail, for instance, whether to put you in the inbox, into promotion or worse, into spam or something like that, right? And 
decoration, and this is where pretty can work against you, decoration, if we overdo it, can miss the mark, not just in how we get received uh, by our reader, but whether or not our reader ever actually hears from us, right? So email providers see an abundance of decoration as promotional. Think about it for a second. If you were sending a work email or you were sending an email to a family member, you probably wouldn't put loads and loads and loads and loads of images in it unless you said, hey, I've attached some images, right? <laughs> um, but but they, they can actually kind of see whether or not they wanna see something as promotional, right? And we don't want to land in the promotions folder, right? We want people who are in Young Living, who are our customers, to see us as a friend who would land in the primary inbox, whose emails they want to open and respond to, right? Not just somebody who sends, hey, here's sale information, because Young Living can do that, right? And they are doing it now. I know they haven't always done it, but they are doing it now. Um, so sure, there's some amount of promotion that we need to do, but we really want to show up in the primary folder, right? Because that's where people actually go and open emails. How many of you maybe have Gmail and don't check your promotions folder every day? Pretty important, right? We don't want to land there. All right, so check this out. Here's This is really important. Not everybody is going to get the images that you send. So this in particular is going to apply to something like a Flowdesk or a MailChimp where you've got maybe... Um, in Flowdesk, I know in particular, we talked about this recently, uh, just internally with our team, when you like you go in there kind of like being in Canva and, and you know, you position things, you make it pretty, you put the text on it. But when it sends, it could either look like this on the left, right? Or, which is what it's supposed to look like, or it could look like this over here on the right. Now, again, <laughs> what do we want our people to see, right? We want them to see what we have to say. Uh, and so there is a way that, you know, that images can work against you. And this is a really important thing to remember as well in terms of mindset. Pretty is nice, but it's, is it more important than what exactly it is that you want to share, right? It's the words, right? At the end of the day, it's the words <laughs> that, that matter in email. It's the words that matter when you're connecting with people. Um, it's the words that get people to buy product. A pretty picture of this month's, um, you know, loyalty rewards, uh, is is not going to be the thing that makes somebody say, oh, I want to go get that, right? Them understanding what it'll do for them, words, that's what's going to make it happen, right? So look, shoe companies, clothing companies like the one I showed you, shoe companies, clothing companies, product companies announcing their sales, they belong in the promotions pile, right? I want to log in. I want to see like my clients have emailed me things. Um, I've got, you know, things I need to take action on um, and I'll get to the promotions later. Right. Because, you know, when I log in, I'm doing work at 9 a.m. I'm not going to read my shoe company promotion emails, you know, that they send to me. And boy, do they <laughs> shoe companies find a reason to email you every day. But look, OK, so Young Living corporate emails might land there as well. And the reason why is that Young Living is in the business of selling products. Young Living is a product company. So Young Living's emails may land on the promotions folder and that would be appropriate. You don't belong in the promotions folder because you are not a product company. Product companies need to share the pretty pictures. Look at this dress, do you wanna buy it? Look at these shoes, do you wanna buy them? Look at this beautiful bottle of oil and here's the information that goes with it. Do you wanna buy it? Young Living does that, shoe companies do that. You, however, as a brand partner, are not a product company. That's Young Living's job. You are a personal brand. You are a human connecting to another human, right? You are in a relationship business. So your job isn't to sell, right? Even though you get commissions on products that are bought by people who you've referred to, your job is not to sell. Your job is to develop and grow relationships so that you can connect those relationships to Young Living so that they can go and buy products that they want, right? Our goal is to guide people toward the information that helps them get the result that they want. And the way that they get that is by purchasing Young Living products. But this is the key mindset shift. You are not a product company. You're a people company. You're a relationship company. You're a relationship business. So what you're doing is not selling. The closest thing we can come to it is coaching and consulting. This is a direct, it's relationship. Hey, what do you have going on? Hey, I've got some things that might be helpful to you. Here's some information. 
If they choose to follow up on it, they purchase the product associated with it, right? That's coaching and consulting, you guys. We tune out sales messaging all the time, don't we? If you can skip a commercial when you're watching YouTube, don't you? Who likes to just sit and watch commercials? Your emails don't need to be commercials, right? We tune those out and we tune in to those who are bringing relevant information and value to our lives. People who are helping us get a benefit that we want, get a thing, achieve a goal, have something that we want. We listen to that, right? But we'll wait to read the shoe email later or we'll just delete it because I don't think I want shoes right now. And maybe somebody thinks, oh, I don't think I want oils right now. And that may be why they're not opening the email. Maybe they don't understand that you're there for them in a way that's not just to sell them oils, but to help them reach a goal, right? So people are happy to open an email from someone that they know, that they like, that they trust, or from someone who is sharing relevant and helpful information that they ask to receive. Right? So there are instances where you may want to share a text-based or email-based class or something to that effect, but they need to say, I want this, right, before we send it to them. And that way they can act on that information. If they want to receive promotional information, they need to say, I want to hear from you regarding the promotions because I want to, be, I want to keep up on that, but it shouldn't be all of what you send. So we put off reading and even delete those promotional emails because they're noisy, right? And we're busy. We have other things we're trying to do. So why would we go through all of that work, you know, to put our brand stamp on some words in an email that we're going to send just so that we can land in the promotions folder or worse, right? So our goal with email, you guys, as brand partners is to be someone whose name other people are excited to see show up in their inbox. We want people to be curious about what we have to say. We want people to look forward to hearing what we have to say. And if they feel like they can predict that it's going to be a pitch for the latest sale, you will get lumped into the shoe sales, right? Because we aren't salespeople. We are relationship builders, right? So what does this mean for you? First, people are going to get emails most often that ask them to respond, right? This is how you shift your strategy. The majority of the time when you are sending an email, it should be expecting a response. Interaction. That's how you get engagement. You ask for interaction. If you've ever been in any kind of social media training, you would know, you would hear that the best way to get engagement is to ask people to talk about themselves, right? You will get a load of engagement on your social media if you ask people what they think about something and they get a space to be heard. What our primary goal is in sending email is to get someone to respond because then we can connect them with meaning to product, not because we need to increase our OGV by the end of the month so that we can hit the rank that we want, not so that we can push the latest sale because, oh gosh, what if they don't hear about it? We need to be sending emails so that people know that we are there to hear them, not to speak to them or at them about whatever it is that we could be selling them, right? So. Our email should start and carry out conversations. Now, occasionally, of course, we can get promotional material like monthly promos, the sales, but it's a fraction compared to the above. Now, look, there you can absolutely do a monthly newsletter that's got a little bit of everything, but just make sure that you are writing it so that people understand that you're actually there for them. Hey, wanted to make sure you see all of this. Here's, here it is. Remember, you could always hit reply and I'm here for you, right? Now, whatever emails that they get from you, aside from the outreach that's expecting a conversation or the, pro the occasional promotional information, whatever else they get from you, they need to get because they asked for it. And this is how we, we are able to not worry about spamming people, right? This is where we uh, provide a link uh, or like a like an automation link or a link to a landing page that has a tag that says newsletter, for instance. And so you say to everyone, hey, if you would like to get these notifications, come over here, right? And opt yourself in. And now you can filter for those people who said yes when you send this stuff out. So you always know that you're sending stuff to thing to people who said, please send me stuff, right? Not just to everybody because you got it. So 
these are the, really the key shifts here. We need to focus first on getting in touch with people and carrying out conversations, right? And then drip little bitty pieces of promotional information where it counts and then provide that supplemental information where it's requested, all right? We open and take action on emails from people with whom we have a personal relationship. So if the majority of your communications aren't in service of a personal relationship, what do you expect to be tuned out by someone who maybe doesn't know you that well or who maybe purchased at your recommendation before but has only really heard from you since because of that purchase, right? So if you want more engagement, we wanna talk about your emails and your vault and other resources on your care calls, right? And your personal engagement with your customers, with folks in your organization, in your existing Facebook groups, if you have them, talk about the fact that you're sending emails. Talk about if you've created a vault to educate and support your customers, talk about it. Every time you interact with someone for the purpose of maybe doing a care call, checking up on their wellness goals, seeing how you can help them reach their next one, ask them, hey, have you opted into email or see, hey, oh, I, I see you're not on the list. You want me to go ahead and add you? Hey, I see you're not in the vault. Would you like me to go ahead and add you? Right. In a lot of cases, you just need to hold somebody's hand and say, hey, look, let's go over here. You're going to love this, right? Sometimes you just got to do it with them, right? It's not an, if you build it, they will come. We need to engage, right? Because this is a relationship. We don't just expect all of our friends to show up to our party because we just sent an RSVP out and figured they would all say yes and then show up on autopilot. Sure, some people will, but most people are busy, right? Let them know, hey, I've got a thing going on. Would you like to come? And then they will respond more likely than they would if you just sent them something and just hoped that they would do something with it, right? So if you really want your emails to be pretty, I really want my brand stamp on this. Okay, form follows function. If we remember this, then we can integrate pretty things while still being effective and hopefully not landing ourselves into the promotions or spam, okay? So you can use things like a newsletter header images, uh, newsletter header image, uh, and maybe some supporting images sparingly, okay? That example that I showed you, which is you know very similar to what you would get from like a flow desk, it's like all image, right? You saw how it was a blank email on one side and then there was text and images on the other one, right? We really wanna make sure that we're using these things sparingly for the purpose of being readable by people who don't have images loading automatically. And of course, because if it's all images, the email folks are gonna know that you're sending a promotion, right? <laughs> so one really cool thing that you can do if you really love design uh, is to create a static page on your website and link to it from your email. So let's just say for instance, you create a page uh, with the page builder in Get Oiling, and you include things like, um, you know, monthly updated stuff from Young Living. These are the um, the gifts with purchase this month. Uh, these are, you know, beauty school and, uh, you know, register for convention and here's a rally and all of this other stuff. You can put all of this onto a page and then you just send an email out that's like, hey, I've just uploaded, I've just uploaded our bulletin board page on the site so you can see all of the new and exciting stuff that's going on why don't you click this link right here and head over and check it out? By the way, how are you? Hit reply, I'd love to hear from you. That's gonna be a million times more effective than some like really, really kind of, you know, curated, very image heavy email, right? And there was a question here real quick about what is a care call? So uh, maybe we ought to do a training on that. Uh, so Cynthia, a care call is essentially, it's a follow-up call with your customers. It is you reaching out, not just to, you know, make sure they get an order uh, and, you know, but it's, it's to make sure that they're using product, that they're loving what they're using, that they understand how to use it. Uh, it's taking care of your people is basically what the care call is. All right. So a static page is, uh, is something that you could do and you could design it to your heart's content, brand it beautifully, and you'll still have that great deliverability in your email and you can send them to one thing that you can just update every month, right? And then if you have a member area with a vault that has this information, again, you can say, hey, I've updated the vault, come check it out. And you've got loads of stuff inside of the vault that they should be engaging with and checking out, right? You could also point over to blog posts or other pages, just depends on what it is that you wanna share, right? So we wanna send emails that people want to open. So if we're gonna do this, we wanna write like we're writing to one person. And that person, 
is our best friend. When you write your emails, don't say, hey guys, hey everybody, say hey and use a personalization tag and then write it like you are talking to one person. That's one of the easiest ways that you can write an email that goes out in bulk that doesn't feel like you're talking at someone, okay? And then write like you are expecting a response, right? You're expecting them to hit reply and continue the conversation. This is one of the number one reasons, if not the number one reason, why we don't have email engagement if it's something that you're struggling with. Because what you're sending is maybe not about them. We engage with things that are about us, right? Make what you're sharing about them. Even if that just means, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I updated all of this cool stuff. And by the way, a static page is just a page. It's just a page on your site. So um, so here's a page, I updated a page, or hey, I updated the vault. Are you in it, by the way? Um, you know, hey, hit reply. Just make it a quick thing, just in, like an email you would send to anyone else you know. But you could send it to 10,000 people at once, right? Or you could send it to one. Write it like you're sending it to one. Keep it short and sweet, make it about them. Use personalization tags. So this is where you use like the contact first name tag. I'll show you that in a second uh, when, when I show you the cool thing I made for you. Um, if you do this, your emails will feel like it's made for that person. Again, whether you're sending it to one or to a hundred and then make sure you're delivering on what you promise in the subject line, right? So if you're saying, you know, this is April updates, then you give the April updates. Um, if it's April updates plus other stuff, maybe put that in the subject line as well, right? And then make sure that you respect their point. Uh, their time so that you're pointing off to additional information without overloading. Now, there are beautiful and great ways to have a longer form email newsletter, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just make sure that make sure that you give people the opportunity to kind of go off and deep dive on their own. So for instance, you're not going to write 27 paragraphs about convention. You're going to write a couple of sentences, pop a link in there, remind them of the deadline to get their tickets, right? You might say, hey, gift with purchase is so exciting this month. Um, the number three on the list is one that I am really looking forward to using for XYZ purpose. Here's the link, go check it out. Use Young Living's own link and send them over to the gift of purchase page because of course you do, because you want them to log into their own get oil, their own Young Living account <laughs> and make a purchase, right? So point off to additional information that you want to share and don't overload. Now, if you are sending topical emails that are like, you know, this week we're talking about hormones and today we're going to break it, break down this type of hormone and system and how it works in the body. That's fine if it's education, but like, keep it one point, right? Unless you're doing little bits and pointing off to sort of like a digest of things, right? So you can do all of this with Get Oiling. That's the good news. So you can create image templates in Canva, which we do have integrated in Get Oiling. And PS, I made you some and you're gonna get them today. Uh, we use those uh, image templates in Canva to use as newsletter headers, featured images, things like this. And then just use those every time you send a newsletter. So, uh, so that when you um, are showing up, if you really want to, you know, really hone in on the visual brand of your emails, uh, branding is repetition after all, uh, right? It's not necessarily style uh, per se, it's consistency. Uh, so have your consistent approach. And if you make this a saved reply, which PS, I made you one, uh, if you use this as a saved reply, you can use it as a template for every newsletter and newsletter type email you will ever, ever send, right? You, you brand it once, you modify it when you need it, and now you're consistently showing up, which is branding. You can also use, and I'll show you how to do this, you guys, and this is something that I don't think you find uh, on like a, like a Flowdesk or a MailChimp, um, but you definitely do have it with us. You can use alternate text on your images. So if you are sending images that happen to have information in them, your reader can still get the message, even if the images don't load. Okay, so let's get to work. I want to show you guys this, and then we're going to get into some website reviews and Q and A. So um, again, if you've got questions about anything, feel free to add them to the Q and A. Um, I am gonna go over to our dashboard here, log in. And um, for those of us who are here, uh, be on the lookout here in just a second for a resource bundle link. And you're going to, uh, you're gonna get access to a saved reply that I created yesterday that has some Canva templates. And actually, if I can pull this up, um, and maybe we should go ahead and announce this here, uh, cause we haven't done this yet. You guys, uh, we have a new way 
to preview emails. If you want to see what something looks like before you send it, you can do that now. And you can do it with campaigns as well as individual emails. So first, um, because I know you guys would really like to see this and have this, I'm going to find this, uh, this template and I'm going to share it in our, um, there we go is our link. I'm going to put this into our chat right now. Grab it. Uh, that's going to take you here. I'm going to show you what this looks like. All right. So uh, this is a monthly newsletter template with images. So if you actually claim the bundle, uh, you're going to see, um, actually, let me view it real quick. This is what you're going to see. You're going to want to grant permission here and claim the bundle. Uh, but if it is this monthly newsletter template saved reply, and then I've got three different Canva templates for you. One of them is a header image. There you go. Uh, one of them is a featured image, and I'll show you what this plugs into uh, here in just a bit. Um, and then the uh, final one here is, if it'll load for me, there we go. This is a, a recipe template uh, image, which again, you'll see what this looks like in a second. So let me stop my share here, and I'm going to show you what a preview looks like, and then we're going to show you how to get to a preview and see what this looks like in your um, in your own inbox. All right. So um, all of these images you see here, you are getting access to, uh, they're included in this bundle. And that is, this is what the template looks like. So um, this is just using saved reply templates and get oiling, put this together in about, I don't know, 15 minutes yesterday. So um, you can put your headlines in here, link off to more information, obviously replace, replace your text. If you wanna pop a little recipe in there, give a little you know announcement there at the end, you can. And you can see this says preview which is pretty cool. You can actually see what these things look like before you send them. So you don't have to worry about whether or not something's gonna look really good. So let's get into here and I'm gonna show you how to use this, which is exciting stuff. Um, what I would encourage you to do is first make this your own. So you're gonna go after you've claimed your bundle, you're gonna go over here to this monthly newsletter template and you'll see that it's right here. Obviously I have, because April is coming up, you're gonna be sending this soon. Uh, it says April, this is all branded to April. But all you gotta do here is just, once you go in and you modify, you claim and modify these templates, uh, you can replace these images. They're already formatted to be the correct size uh, for this placement here, right? So those featured images are these two here on the sides. This is the header. You could use multiples of the header if you wanted to. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there's this uh, recipe one down here. Uh, and you could use this to your uh, heart's content. But let me show you one other thing. If you wanted to make your own template, if you don't like the layout of that, use the images that I've given you because they work perfectly with our saved replies. So I'll put a saved reply in here. I'm just going to call this newsletter too. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use other saved replies to build this. So the one that I used... I think was blank newsletter two. Yep, that's this one, blank newsletter two. So here's our header, which uh, again, you guys would be going in and uploading the one that you have uh, added from Canva. We've got a featured image here. You just swap out the images, right? So first of the month or prior to the first of the month or whatever it is that you, uh, whenever it is that you're sending an email like this, you're just gonna go into Canva first modify the images to your liking. Uh, and then, you know, and then just come swap them out. And, uh, and, and it's pretty simple and easy to do right now. Um, that's if you wanted to change that completely. So make the first one just like one that you would send out. So like for April, uh, have that be just sort of ready to go uh, for April. And then all you're going to do is you're going to go to campaigns. If you want to make it a campaign, you create the campaign here, and then you go and apply the campaign to your contacts or you, you know, pick the contacts that you want to. So maybe you filter for people who are tagged newsletter, for instance. I'm just gonna send one to just me um, or pretend what, like I'm going to. There's me, okay. Uh, I'm going to hit mail here. I'm gonna go to saved replies. I'm gonna go find that monthly newsletter template that's already here, ready to go. Obviously, if you wanted to change this, you could change anything here if you want but it's already formatted and ready. Uh, and then of course, if I wanted to send myself a preview, all I gotta do is just hit the send preview button and you're gonna see the send preview button on the campaigns page as well, okay? Uh, but then of course we could schedule this to send out because of course it's not April. Maybe we wanna send this at 9 a.m. 
on April 1st. And this would go out tomorrow morning to whoever we have uh, scheduled this broadcast to go out to. Um, or again, you could uh, set a campaign up to deliver and then just apply it to your contacts ahead of time. Uh, real quick, just going into Canva, I don't wanna get too into the weeds here, but let's just go take a look here real quick. And um, I just wanna show you how simple it is uh, and a couple of pointers. So you saw in the email, um, the preview that I showed you guys, uh, that this, uh, you may have seen that this is a transparent background. So when you're using sort of like an arched architectural type element like this, uh, you do wanna make sure that when you are saving this file that you are uh, downloading it with a transparent background. You're going to get that feature with Canva Pro. Um, if you um, if you you know are not in the market for Canva Pro right now, then you know you could certainly you know save it as is or just make it a full rectangle, right? Uh, let's see. The other one of these uh, has a, a GIF in it. I I said it correctly, you guys. <laughs> we just learned recently. We, we've been correcting each other forever. Like no, it's a GIF. G is for graphic. <laughs> Apparently, the guy that came up with the GIF <laughs> says it's GIF. <laughs> um, all right, so this has a cute uh, couple of little um, GIFs in it. And uh, all you have to do if you wanna find something like that, maybe if you wanna say May flowers for your May one, you can come over here and maybe we'll, we'll just, I'm gonna look up flowers. And uh, if we go to graphics and then filter the search here for animated, apply filters. You've got lots of fun. Uh, my computer's taking a while to load. Here we go. Wow, look at all those flowers. So we could actually just click those and add those in right where, where we want to, which is pretty fun. So uh, you can add those interactive elements if you want to, if you really want to make it pretty, uh, but don't focus too much on the style because again, emails are really, really, really all about the substance. Okay. Was there anything else that we needed to show or cover there? Anybody have questions about this? Who's really excited that you can send yourself a preview really easy now? Now you can see what it looks like. That's awesome. <laughs> I was very excited to do that yesterday. All right. Uh, oh, good question, uh, Susie. Can I see a preview on event invitations before I send them? Uh, you should be able to. I don't know if it's going to substitute the link or not, um, but if not, when you send it, it does put the actual link in there. Okay. But it should have the rest of the email, um, just like it would the link may so, yeah. not work because it's a preview. Got you. Okay. So you'll be able to mostly see it. All right. If you use email campaigns and you send them out, if you get additional people to send the campaign to, you don't want the people that are already mid campaign or have already been through your campaign series to receive those emails again. How do you add the additional people on it? So Elizabeth, that's going to depend on the way you have the campaign structured. If it is just a general evergreen, anyone could get it at any time campaign, you just add that campaign to someone. Um, if it is a time based campaign, uh, that like the, maybe the campaign starts on April 1st and the emails are delivered on day seven and 14 and 28 and so on. If someone signs up on day uh, 15, they're only going to get the email scheduled to go out after that point. Uh, so it just, it just kind of depends. Um, if you do want something that is not evergreen in a campaign, uh, then just make sure that you are uh, double checking the dates. Uh, but yeah, anybody could uh, sign up for that campaign at any point in time. So let's just say, for instance, you're using Simple Grace Collective's uh, monthly drip out campaigns, right? Um, or I think um, Wild Customer Delight has these as well, where um, you know they start delivering on Mondays. I think it's like a Mondays thing. Uh, but maybe someone joined your team, their new customer next week, and you've already applied the campaign to people. If you've got the, a landing page or, you know, you want to manually apply them or whatever, they'll still get all the messages everyone else did. Um, they'll just get it based on the date that they signed up. I hope that helps. Okay, Nicole, if you don't have Canva Pro with a transparent background not be available on the template you set us. Yeah, so if you don't have Canva Pro, it's just going to be white right there. Uh, so you could just change the background color of the entire document if you want to. Um, I wouldn't fool too much with or worry too much with like whether things have transparent backgrounds in email because, you know, some people have dark backgrounds in email. Some people have white backgrounds in email. This is why the words are just the most important thing. So um, I, if you don't uh, want Canva Pro at this point, you definitely don't have to use it. I would just keep it a rectangular shape uh, and just make it, you know, make it your own. 
Okay. So the measurement of the newsletter header that I use, let me see. I know it's it's in here on the actual document itself. When you click that template, it'll tell you it's six. I did 600 by 200 um, with by height. All right, good question. Okay, we do have uh, a site review here today. Lisa Argyle, are you here? Will you raise your hand for me, please? Here we go. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, hi. <laughs> hi, yeah, let's talk about your site. Um, it's very skin and bones. It's, okay. I've had the website for, I think two years and just started using it a few months ago. I had no idea the gem that I had in my hands at my fingertips. Um, I used to use Marketing Sense years ago and didn't even use that to its capabilities, but um, I am, every day I hear the word vault, I, I see the word vault in the, in the Facebook group, um, campaigns, and I'm so worried about spamming people and getting the unsubscribe, but I know I got to get over that. Um, there's so much information I want to get out to my team. Um, I just need to sit down and actually do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, if, if you're really focusing on the personal connection first, if people yeah. are expecting, like if you communicate to them, expect to hear from me via email, put this in your address book, you'll receive emails from me this often, that kind of thing, then you're mm -hmm. not going to really see the unsubscribe in that way. I mean, this mm -hmm. isn't really... The, the approach that we're talking about isn't meant to substitute uh, what should still very much be, you know, a meaningful personal back and forth. Okay. Um, what do people use vaults for? What, what, are, what is a vault? What, do, what are we talking about? It's like, it's like a magical place to me. <laughs> it is a magical place. So what a vault is, <laughs> a vault is, I mean, it's, it's a vault of information. So a vault is a a sort of, you know, locked little treasure trove of stuff uh, that certain types of contacts can receive. So let's just say, for instance, for your Young Living customers, you want to provide um, your sways from Grow Workspace, or, you know, maybe you've got, um, I don't know, links to YouTube videos that you found really helpful, or maybe you've made some, some content or something like that. It's basically what a vault can be. I think one of the most magical things a vault can be for a Young Living Grand Partner is a safe, secure replacement for a Facebook group. Okay. That's the first thing. Uh, but vaults could also be places where you, um, where you sell product, uh, you know, like digital products. You could have an online course in a vault and sell access to it or a coaching program. Um, Vaults are, it, it's, it's so if you have a member area on your site, which um, at your plan level, I believe you do, mm -hmm. uh, if you have a, a vault uh, on your site, then you could, you know, you could sell things, you could have a private place for people to hang out. Let me show you, um, I'll show you an example, actually in our own member area. So here, let me do a little screen share here. Okay, so we are logging into the member area right now. And for whatever reason, it's taking a little bit. Uh, here we go. So this is the Get Oiling member area, which anyone can join. Um, you may or may not see all of these different things. So like this become an icon, personal branding intensive. We offer this. Uh, we don't sell it directly usually. I think we have before, but not often. It's usually like you get it when you, um, you know, sign up or upgrade uh, during a couple times a year. So this is a coaching program. Uh, so if you have access to it, you would see this. Uh, but there's a lot of other things in here that you, you know, would see no matter what. So let's look at the goal getter workshop, for instance, which anyone can join. Um, it's got a class in here and it's got a discussion room where we can chat. Uh, and here, let's look at this in the workshop modules. A lot of, you know, just a lot of stuff that you can do with it. You could have video, you can have discussion, you can have downloads, lots of cool things. And actually, let me go to um, 
me go to Jane's account and actually show you an example. If you go to the, the How to Move Your Groups Off of Facebook course, which is inside of our uh, Get Oiling member area, and it is free, um, you can uh, learn how to actually build this. So I'm gonna view the member area for Jane here. So this is a member area, and these are vaults inside of the member area. Now, you don't have to have all of these or any number of these, uh, but this one here is one of the ones that I teach how to create for yourself inside of the How to Move Your Groups course. And uh, basically what you're able to do is have discussion, uh, have sort of a guide on getting started with Young Living, website information, you know, understanding important terms, uh, you know, like what is PV, because I'm a new customer, that kind of stuff, uh, placing an order, um, different resources that you recommend that maybe Young Living doesn't provide, um, that kind of stuff. You can put it all in one place. And, um, and then my favorite part about this is, is leveraging Grow Workspace's uh, incredible educational resources to have, you know, some, if you want somebody to learn about Ningxia, you can say, well, go log, log into our member area here. I'll show you how to do it. And then let's come over here to Oily Education. And then, you know, let's learn about Ningxia. And then you could be, you know, incentivizing your team to go and share their Ningxia stories down here in the comments, right? So instead of in a Facebook group where you've got, you know, testimonials that just show up randomly, you can actually have testimonials in strategic places. So that's- Gosh. Quick synopsis. <laughs> and, and this is just, you know, stuff that you can give to your customers. You could also sell access to vaults as well if you wanted to have a course or a program. And actually, I believe it was last week, um, I showed um, one of our one of our customers, uh, one of our members, Megan, uh, who has a whole course on creating a healing barn. And so she sells that, but it also helps her to get more Young Living customers. Wow, that's excellent. It's pretty cool. And only people who we invite to get into the vaults have access. That is an option. Yeah. It can be fully public where anyone can get access if you want. It could be totally okay. secret except for people who get an invite, which is what I okay. recommend doing for a young living customer group. Uh, and then, um, and then, yeah, you've got other ways of, of granting access as well. So if they purchase, then they can access and that kind of thing. I um, am taking a course to become an aromatherapist and a lot of the verbiage, all of the verbiage that they use is way outside of the guidelines that we are allowed to as Young Living brand partners to use. And to share that information that I'm learning is, is scary because I can't do it online. I can't, I'm, af I'm afraid to do it on Facebook. I can't do it on Facebook. So this sounds like the member only invited people might be the perfect place for me to share a lot of the information that I'm learning. We can't specifically condone, okay. you know, conduct and that kind of thing. But what I can tell you is that your member area is your member area. Okay. And the people who see what's in there are the people you put there. So um, yeah, we, we don't, we don't have, um, we, we don't have Facebook police. You don't have basically. vault policemen? You don't have vault policemen? We don't have, we, no, we don't have vault police, no. <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. Can I help you with any other things? Do you have any questions? Oh my gosh. I've, I've probably got, I apologize. I was not exactly so ready. I canceled last week. Um, we were getting ready for my stepfather to pass and he did just pass yesterday morning. And I didn't have all of my questions ready for today. And I, I was going to cancel once again, but I did not want to do that again. So, um, well, I'm sorry for your loss and feel no, no. free to reschedule you. anytime you're, you just come back when, you know, br bring all the questions. Okay. I, I definitely, definitely will. Um, yeah, just that, just that one subject alone about the vaults is amazing. Forget about, um, campaigns that that stuff I can try and work through on my own and and Greg is so um, amazing with the questions being answered uh, on Facebook it's just like it's like he's sitting there waiting at the computer for us to ask a question <laughs> <laughs> he's like my Greg, own uh, question he's, answerer <laughs> he's, he's kind of omnipresent you're right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's amazing quick. customer service I have to tell you it's absolutely amazing customer service that means the world to us 
Um, and, and yes, we do have a Facebook group that is facebook.com forward slash get groups. Good oiling online is, is what you want to look for. Um, and by the way, uh, and Lisa, this is for you and this is for anyone else who wants to learn how to build vaults and create these resources for your members. If you go to getoiling.com forward slash move your groups, and I, I put that in the chat here, uh, that's a free course uh, that will walk you through like, what is a vault and how do I set one up and how do I organize? Like here, I've got all this information. How do I organize it and put it in the way I want it to? So um, definitely check that out. Okay. All right, we look forward to having you on again, Lisa. I'm sorry. Thank for you loss. very much. Thank you for understanding. And um, I look forward to being on again with, with many, 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 many questions. We look forward to that so very much. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll talk soon. Thanks. All right, so we've got a bunch of questions here. Definitely want to answer them. Um, all right, so what is the best plan in Get Oiling? I had it at one time, but I've not used it, so my subscription is no longer active. So uh, Jerica, it kind of depends on where you're at in your business. But uh, my recommendation is always to look at basic and above, because if we're, if we're talking about creating vaults and branding yourself and that kind of thing, uh, start with, with basic or, or premium. Um, I think you can kind of, if you're not really building a lot of, of vaults and pages and stuff like that, um, and you're kind of just getting started, basic is a really great place to start. And I think you can get away with it up through like maybe executive, uh, you know, executive maybe beginning of silver. Uh, and then, you know, beyond that, you're gonna wanna start looking at premium because it's the contact volume, uh, you know, the, the plans and stuff uh, where, you know, in terms of how many emails and texts and stuff you can send out, you could always add more of those if you want to. And of course you get started with one plan. If you decide that you need more of something, we do have add-ons for things like branding. We do currently have unlimited vaults and classes that you can add on if you want to really get into creation of these things in your member area. So, uh, but if you wanted to say, you know, change your plan level, really, really easy thing to do, even if you do uh, choose to go annual, uh, which you certainly can and you save uh, quite a bit of money there as well. And feel free to reach out, uh, you know, support at getoiling.com and, and we can help answer any more specific questions there too. Um, where do we go to see all the get oiling courses like these? So Heather, that, that would be actually going to uh, getoiling.com forward slash members and logging into our member area. We use our own stuff and you can see everything that's there uh, that you've opted into. All right, Cindy says, so we can have a team vault, a lead vault, a member ed vault, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I was going through the training and think that all of those vaults would be helpful for me in the direction I want to go. Yes. So if you go to getoiling.com forward slash move your groups, you're going to see uh, that course will show you a vault for leads, a vault for your customers, a vault for your builders, and sort of the strategy of how you set those things up. Absolutely. Um, builder vaults, uh, is it, it's sort of the last thing that I would recommend creating, uh, just because so much of the important pieces of duplication are taking place in the customer, the, the customer facing vault. Um, and, and again, like, it's just so important to have that one-on-one -on -one connection. And that increases where you've got somebody who actually wants to build this business with you. So where you might have monthly care calls with your customers, you should have weekly calls with your brand partners and really establish that connection and that commitment of working together. Um, and so if you start seeing that you're amassing, amassing resources uh, that could be better shared and organized in a vault, then it's time to build it. Uh, but I usually recommend that you wait. Like I, I honestly, like with the clients that I work with where we're building stuff on the back end, builder vaults or something that like platinums, it's like platinum diamond and, and beyond is where I would recommend something like that. You could really get a lot out of uh, before that point using your, your customer vault for a lot of stuff. Um, to do, okay, unless again, unless you've got a ton of stuff that you wanna put in there. Um, Suzanne, you can put something on the wish list. Let us know. We always love wish list items. Just about everything we have on our platform is theirs because someone just like you said, hey, can you make it do that? <laughs> All right. An option for UK dates versus US dates often gets very confusing, especially when my to do lists come up. I read 4.3 as 4 March, but for you, it's 3 April. <laughs> got you. Okay. Noted. Noted. There's some funny math that you've got to do if you want to time campaigns as well, because the clock is set to 5 p.m. Central Time U.S., right? So, you know, we had like some automated campaigns when we first started doing this for uh, for Katinka, who was running a thing in Belgium. You know, we just kind of had to know, all right, well, whatever that 9 a.m. time is there, it's this time central. So, yeah, that's definitely that's wish list worthy. Thank you for sharing that. Can you do everything you can do on getoiling.com on the attract wall app? I don't see my dashboard on there. Am I missing something? So make sure, um, so the attract wall app, you can 
manage your back end of the site, build pages, do all that kind of stuff, and you can interact as yourself uh, in your member area and any member area that's on a tract well or good oiling that you have access to. And uh, so if you're not seeing your dashboard, you want to make sure that you log in on that app with your get oil like email. And so, um, so it's basically all you got to do is just go in there and uh, I think you're going to add an account. Uh, you're going to put that email address in there. The system will send you a link to confirm. And then once you've clicked that in your email, you should be able to see everything there. And you can be logged into multiple accounts there at once. All right, good, good answer and question session, you guys. Really, really great questions today. Okay, so we're right at one o'clock. It looks like we've got all of the questions answered here in the Q&A. Um, really appreciate you guys' time today and uh, look forward to having you back on again next week, same time. That's uh, getoiling.com forward slash weekly work session. Let us know what you want to learn about. What do you want to learn about next? Uh, let us know on our Facebook group. Find us there. We're there. We love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, let's go send out some emails today that get people to respond. Let's connect with our people today. All right. Hope you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.